So I want my article to focus on a couple things. I do want to do some comparisons between Grant and Lincoln, but what I'm really interested in is looking at the number of parents divorced and if people have a job. I actually wonder if there's any um, relationship between the two, so I kind of want to focus on of the percent of parents who are divorced, is there a greater number of students who have jobs than who have people who have married parents. I also might break that down by gender over here and GPA. So let's look at how to do this. So to do this, I need to use a pivot table, and these are the first skills that I'm going to be focusing on. What I need you to do is actually to work right along with me, because I think you will have some of the same data I do. So go ahead, if you haven't already, and open up your data set. All right, the first thing I do is a bit organizational. First off, I don't like my data to say sheet one, so I'm just going to right-click there and rename it um, original data. All right, got that taken care of. Now the other thing is I don't like it when I can no longer see my headings. So I'm going to freeze pane so that I can always see my headings. So I highlight the row underneath. Notice I hit the two so the entire line is highlighted. And then I go over to view and I click on freeze panes and I freeze panes and now I can see all of my data. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, also put in filters so I can kind of play with this data again. So I'm just going to highlight my headings, go over to my home page, and just go bridging down filter. So now if I say I'm like worried, do I even have enough, you know, parents that are divorced to look at it? I can just quickly sort it A to Z, and I can see I have a lot of no's, and I will have some of the S's down there as well. I definitely have some issues right here because I have these people who've never been married or had other answers, so I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Now I'm ready to make my pivot table, so I'm going to highlight all my data. I just click in the um, middle of the table and hit Control A, and that highlights everything. And I simply go to Insert, and I hit Pivot Table. I'm going to make a new sheet for that, so I'm going to hit OK. There's my new sheet. I initially just go right ahead and rename that so I can keep track of what I'm doing. So I'm going to call this Pivot Table 1. Now one thing I notice right away is all of these categories, they are huge and they're going to drive me crazy. This is too much for me to keep track of. So what I'm going to actually have to do is go back to my original data and I know that I've done all of So what I'm going to do so I know what to do is I'm going to actually click on each one of these and just make each one of these individual ones, I have to do individually one at a time, yellow. This way when I open them up I'll be able to see which ones I want to keep and which ones I don't. And then I'm going to highlight everything all the way across to Z. I'm going to right click and click unhide and then I know immediately by the colors what I need to actually go ahead and delete. So go ahead and do that. Now I just have my nice original data. Now the issue is when I go back to the pivot table, I still have all these things listed. So what I need to do is anytime I make a change to my original data, I need to refresh that pivot table. So I'm just going to go up here to the pivot table tools. I go to analyze and I'm just going to hit refresh. And now I should have a much shorter list. So that covers our first skill for pivot tables, which is refresh. Now we're going to go on to value setting. So I'm going to start by just breaking things up by school. So I'm going to put rows. I'm going to put schools right here. And then maybe the first thing I'm interested in, just to get an over idea, and everyone should have this data perhaps, is GPA. So go ahead and put that in. Now this is some pretty weird data. So um, this doesn't make sense for GPA, so what I need to go to is go to value settings. So if I just open this up and click on value settings, I can see it was just adding them all up. What I actually want is average GPA, so I'm going to call it average. Okay. Yikes. That does look better, but we have a couple issues. One is this makes no sense that we have five. Okay. The other thing that's difficult for me is all these numbers are so hard to read, so I'd like to just have two numbers at the decimal. So I'm going to go right back here, go to value settings again, I'm going to go to number format, and go to number, and I'm just going to put it at two decimals and say OK, OK, and now that looks much easier. But let's now uh, battle this right here. So I'm going to go back to my original data. This is where the uh, filter comes in handy. I'm going to go, what is your GPA? And let's just sort it largest to smallest and see what's going on. Aha. Somebody put in that they have a GPA of 200. Now, I don't know, maybe they meant 2.0, but maybe they didn't. I'm not sure. When I don't know, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that blank. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go back to my table. I'm going to go back to analyze, refresh my data, and that looks much better.
So we've now looked at a couple other things here, which is value setting um, and refresh data and number format. Last thing I want to look at here is adding in an extra row. So if I really want to go into an article writing about the GPA of high schools and specifically comparing these two schools, I could also uh, take a closer look. Like numbers, always first look isn't enough. So I'm going to also look at what grade they're in because I'm wondering if that breaks things up. So I'm going to actually bring this into another row. And now I can see that there's a, a kind of a breakdown. GPAs change a little bit. Now this is a little hard for me to visualize. So I think what I'd like to do is actually insert a table. So I'm going to add a pivot chart table, which is right here. Um, just That looks fine. I'll just say, OK, nothing fancy. Um, of course, I always do like to get a little fancier because I like things that look pretty. OK, that looks better. And uh, put in the title. So this table might make it a little easier to see. I do have one issue, though, which is the, I can't really compare 10th graders because Lincoln doesn't have any. So I'm just going to switch the grade you're in a little bit. I'm going to open this up, and let's just pull out the 10th, make that look a little bit better. OK, now I can see a little clearer what is going on. Um, sometimes it's nice to have the values at the top. So let's go ahead and put those in. All right, so now I can see the data labels. One more thing real quick. I don't need that that total right there. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. I'm noticing that there's a real difference between the GPA of 11th graders who are taking statistics at Grant and Lincoln. That might be something more interesting to talk about, to do a little research on. Why is that happening? 10th graders are much closer. Um, but what also might be interesting to look at is actually what their standard deviation is, because we know that makes a difference too. So let's go look at that. I kind of like to look at the overall standard deviation. So I'm going to get our grades. So I'm going to get rid of that for just a second. So now I can just compare the overall GPA. I know these look very different, but if you look at it, it's only a hundredth of a point apart. So they, in a way, they seem very close, but I do want to look at it by standard deviation because we know that makes a difference. Um, so I'm going to go to value set, um, value setting, and go down to standard deviation. I'm say OK. And now what we can see is there's actually a, a quite a bit bigger difference in standard deviation. So Grant um, has much more variability in the GPA than Lincoln does. So instead of GPA, I actually like to unclick that and actually look at do you have a job. So for do you have a job, I'm going to bring this down over to values. And um, I want you to notice I've actually done two things here. One, if I just count how many have jobs. Now, this number itself isn't very helpful to me because I really need to know the percent. Um, it's not going to give that to me. But what I can do is find the percent of my own by kind of doing this. And so now I can see, OK, the total number at Lincoln, I can see how many yeses and how many noes I have. Again, right now, this table isn't too helpful because it's just giving me the total count and not percents. So here's how I get to percents. I actually click on my table, anywhere on this table, I'm going to right click and um, right here you can see value settings all right so we're going to open that up and I'm going to go show values as and instead of no calculation I'm going to actually say percent of row of parent row total because the parent row is just Grant and Lincoln separated okay now I've got percents that are helpful. Now, ironically, percents are hard to look at when you've got two decimals after the point. So I'm going to actually change my format now so I don't show the. So I can just right click here and go to format and just get rid of the two decimals. And now it's a little bit easier to look at. Ooh, because I didn't only for that one. Let me just fix all of these. So if I'm writing about what percent of students have a job, I now have some data. I might want to save this data and save this graph. So I'm just going to right click and control C. And then I'm going to actually just move it um, onto a page so that I don't lose it. Because as I play with my pivot table, this is going to go away. So now I have it saved on a document that I can go back to. All right, the last thing I want to do is bring in slicers. All right, to bring in a slicer, I'm just going to activate this again. I'm going to analyze, and I'm going to insert a slicer. Because what I really want to look at is I want to see if when parents are divorced, if the per percent of students having jobs changes. So I now have the slicer in, and it kind of changes what I'm looking at. I only look at people with divorced parents. I'm going to click Yes. And now suddenly, you see all these percents. So when I have divorced parents, I can see that the number of people without jobs has gone up quite a bit. I'm going to capture this again. I want to save this piece of data, because I think it's going to be really useful to me in the future. So I'm going to put that right here for me to have. Go back to my sheet.
see if things change um, when you have jobs with um, undivorced parents, with parents that are married, and suddenly we see a big difference in these changes. So this is starting to look interesting, and I might have an interesting article about it. I might actually not want to include. I might want to look at it without worrying about the high school you attended. So down here I might get rid of this and just look at these percents by just overall. So this is no when um, thesis would be you got married parents. So I should change that title. And this is kids overall when you have divorced parents. So again, trying to looking at these difference. The never married group is so small, I really can't look at that data. I hope this is helpful for you as you begin analyzing your data um, for your topic and what you want to break down. Please remember to save everything you get, your data, as you go so that you can then write a paper about it. All right, enjoy the work.